Hi, hello, good morning. This is Bob Miramar once again, and I am broadcasting coming from Los Angeles, Laguna. And uh, you can hear in the background that uh, there are sounds of uh, musical instruments and somebody singing. This is actually a night stay in a uh, resort called uh, Villa Amore. And I was not able to broadcast last night. So this morning, I will be sharing you something, but uh, before that, let me just uh, lead you in prayer because I have uh, received so many prayer requests and I have left uh, the list in my room. Somebody who's confined in uh, East Avenue Hospital, somebody's confined in uh, National Kidney Institute, somebody's undergoing a biopsy examination, and also the daughter of Brother Chris Sagala just had been operated uh, in her breast and so you're recuperating and the samples will be uh, brought to undergo biopsy examination and so many others are sick. I am actually uh, hiding myself inside a very nice comfort room uh, just to do this video because in my room it is so dark there and uh, my family is fast asleep while our uh, some other children with their leaders are there downstairs and having a great fellowship with one another uh, they uh, are actually um, praying with each other uh, asking God for guidance uh, because all of us are workers in the body of Christ and also especially uh, our priority is uh, our home church and so uh, I am here would like also to remind myself that we are not working for men and like uh, just, uh, like what the Apostle Peter teaches us in the book of Acts that I, he would rather obey God than men but our leaders in our respective uh, uh, body of Christ and Church uh, organization, our local body of Christ, our leader, he is observing uh, the ways of the Lord. And so, uh, me, myself, and my children, my family, and our leaders in our local church, as we serve the Lord, we serve under the stewardship of a leader who is also uh, doing what our master shepherd wants us to do the Lord Jesus Christ for all pastors and leaders and evangelists teachers and apostles and prophets we are all under shepherds of God and we are all under shepherds under the Lord Jesus Christ and so everyone's listening if you are serving the Lord and you're doing your best capacity to bring about a good result because you love God and you are obeying uh, the Word of God when it comes to ministry service because Pastor Bob would always uh, tell, tell himself that ministry is spelled as S-E-R-V-I-C-E. -E. Ministry to me is actually service and it is serving the Lord by serving the people, bringing about what God wants me to bring to people, to bring them to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross of Jesus because there is more room for salvation at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ernie de la Cruz, thank you for watching and uh, uh, please do uh, help me and uh, let's unite together in prayer those who are now uh, also uh, in their uh, places uh, where they are, uh, re you are ready for yourselves to do your devotion. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we thank you so much for uh, what you have uh, intended in your heart for each of us to receive and to enjoy, for each of us to uh, uh, partake with and also to be used as your channels of blessings towards other people. We submit ourselves to you, Lord God, and ask you that you will continue to lead us the way, that you will continue, Lord, 
to make our efforts uh, fruitful and successful because this is what your will and so let your will be done and so let us be elevated and uh, put more of the influence of the Holy Spirit so that we can continue to do what you want us to do Father bless everybody and also the protection the covering and also the abundant supply of what they need and we ask you this in the mighty name of Jesus those are coming from many different parts of the world in many different uh, time zones and also our senior pastor will be traveling towards another uh, international uh, uh, international ministry Father God let your hand of mercy and covering be upon him and uh, I pray for my uh, co-leaders and uh, co-workers in the vineyard of the Lord like uh, Brother Dennis Manara, uh, Mar Marala and Rizal Labe. Lord God, all of us, all of us uh, are under your, your, your mighty power and uh, provision and protection and let your presence, Lord, hallelujah, allow us to be proper to promote the gospel to all the places that you want us to be in every moment and every time and every person in every place however and anyhow that your word and your work shall continue to grow and prosper in our lifetime in our everyday life thank you so much father bless oh god your children your people your church universal and every church local and the leadership of the Philippine General Council of the Assemblies of God and all the departments, all the districts and also officials, we thank you God that you will always be able to prosper and also to answer all the, the prayer requests that your children has, hallelujah, as a whole in the name of Jesus, Lord let us be uh, so effective in every area of work that you have been trusted, O oh Lord. Thank you so much, Father, for the life of Jesel Garcia Coloma. Hallelujah. Bless everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So for a short moment, in a short while, I will be sharing with you what the Apostle Paul writes in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses uh, 5 uh, specifically coming from verse 5 to verse 15 I am coming and I am coming from the New English uh, Translation Bible it says what is Apollos really or what is Paul servants through whom you came to believe and each of us in the ministry the Lord gave us I planted Apollos watered but God caused it to grow so about every man's effort to obey and do the work of the Lord it is God who is the most important and our work can never be prosperous and fruitful without the power of God so all, all of the workers of the Lord all of us are important people are so much important but we are not here just to serve people primarily but we serve people because we have God and serving people and serving the people of God is actually the most important part of service and kind of service that we can do to worship God and to honor God. So this is what the Apostle Paul is telling. There is God. He is the one powerful. So meaning the power and the authority and the influence of Paul and uh, Apollos to make uh, efficiently and effectively the ministry and the work that God has entrusted to each of them is the same God who is entrusting and empowering and giving influential uh, authority to each of our servants and those who are coming to the to the to the field of harvest individuals who are uh, in the in their hearts beating the heartbeat of the Lord and they, they have the passion now the enthusiasm and they have the the, 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 the vision to serve the Lord it is 
God who gives us the powerful influence to serve Him and to do the ministry, being the under-shepherds of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jerry Pisek and Rosalind Pascoa Subido, you are watching and thank you so much. And uh, uh, please bear with me and you're coming from uh, different parts of the world. Uh, also some of you coming from many different parts of the Philippines, I thank you. And the Apostle Paul continues to write, so it is God who caused it to grow the church. Schneider, the one who plants, counts for anything. Not all will be his credit, nor the one who waters, but God who causes the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters work as one. We have to work as one, whether we are separated by time and distance. As long as you have Jesus, as long as Jesus is the, is the, is the God of what you do, is the God of your ministry service, as long as the Bible is your guide in doing that service like me, like many others. Yes, God bless you, Jerry Pizek and your family. And so what happens? God will empower our work. God will empower our ministry as we work uh, for, for greater efficacy. So neither the one who plants comes for anything or the one who waters, but God who causes the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters work as one. Unity, let us be united. But each will receive his reward to his work. That is it. We have to do our best because we are not doing our best only for earthly value or earthly benefits rather if you may say i have to consider uh, to work and serve the lord uh, effectively and efficiently as long as i live because the lord promises me benefits in this world yes you are right but also is uh, god is also promising us rewards and that those rewards will be rewarded in heaven for its one man's work all right but it's will receive this reward according to his work we are co-workers belonging to god look at that we are co-workers belonging to god and verse 9 of chapter 3 from the book of first corinthians you are god's field god's building then, according to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I led a foundation, but someone else builds on it, and each one must be careful how he builds. It is also God who is equipping us to build His temple and to give us everything to, to build according to the foundation that has been led ahead of us. So let us be careful how we lay our, our work. Let us be careful how we focus and to whom we focus our work. And what is our work to be done? For no one can lay any foundation other than what is being led, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Hey, Patrick Bartolome, thank you for watching and waving. And uh, uh, please be with us in prayer, sir. Twelve. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, its builder's work will be plainly seen. You see, we are all called builders, builders of the kingdom of God. For the day will make it clear because it will be revealed by fire, testing by fire. And the fire will test what kind of work it has done. If what someone if what someone has built survives, meaning survives the fire. Yes, Randy Banias, good morning. Hello, sir. Thank you so much. If what someone has built survives, he will receive a reward. If someone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as through fire. What this verse 15 is saying, anyone can be reaching heaven right and gloriously but could also lose rewards and some other reaching heaven the same state of a glorious reaching on the final destination but is full of rewards 
What do you think, my friend? Which is better? Because you are born again and you are doing your best. As long as you live, you do your best to minister and serve God by ministering and serving the people of God in the vast harvest fields, bringing more souls to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, nurturing them, discipling them, making them able also to bring more souls to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we unite each other. We love God and we love each other. We support each other. We bring and bear burdens with each other. And then bring more people to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. And then when we are reaching our destination, you are heavy bound, all right, of all the rewards for all the labors, hard work, perspiration, inspiration, and, uh, you know, uh, without letting go, every moment is special to you and you are doing what has to be done. You are crying out more tears for the salvation of more people and then people are saved and then you are heavy bound with rewards in heaven. And someone just uh, had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and has been comfortable with his faith and never had a chance to serve God and then reaches heaven in a very glorious manner but empty of rewards. What is the best for you to aspire? Heaven with rewards or heaven without nothing at all, only sin? I am not inventing my point. It is stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 15. He himself will be saved but only as through fire. Lumusot sa matinding apoy ng pagsubo, nakalitas at nakapunta sa langit, pero walang reward kahit isa. Samantalang, yung maraming iniluha, maraming sugat, katulad ng kanyang Master Shepherd Jesus Christ, maraming sleepless nights, maraming laba na pinagdaanan, hindi bumigay, Hindi nagsabi, Lord, ayaw ko na. Magpapatuloy ako. Sinaktan. Alright? Ng mundo. Sinaktan. Ng mga mahal sa buhay na nag-persecute dahil siya Christian. Sinaktan ng asawa, ng anak, ng manuga, ng apo, ng kumpare, ng kaibigan. Sinaktan ng mga taong nasa church na nawala sa linya ang kanilang pananampalataya at pananaw sa buhay patungkol sa biblical Christianity at sila ay nag-serve dahil sila ay merong mga taong gustong paglingkuran dahil meron silang mga gustong makuhang influence o pabor nasaktan, nasugatan, lumuha, hindi sumuko pagdating ng huli, nakarating ng langit ng isang servant ng Panginoon, nakatulad ni Pablo, nakatulad ni Apolos, at ang kalang mga gawa ay sinubok sa apoy ng Panginoon, at ang lumabas, gold, silver, and precious stones. Spiritually speaking, and this is a figurative word, but, if your work has been done like wood, hay, and straw, everything will be burned up with fire and nothing will be left. Then you will say, it's okay because still I am saved. It is okay that we are still saved, but it is much better to be heaping up with rewards from every good work that you are doing while you live on earth. Brother, next that I'd like to point out, Keep yourself united. Be loyal to your leader. If you're called to serve the Lord and you have, you have a pastor or pastors above you, do not create division. Do not create dissension. Do not create contentions inside your church, inside your fellowship, inside your Bible study group, inside your small group, inside your life group, inside the ministry where you belong. But if you hear some dissensions, contentions, and and uh, rumors of, uh, of uh, heresies, and uh, uh, even though it, it is true, who's perfect anyway? All of our stories are still in writing. 
So the book of Hebrews would say, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the Lord is still writing our story. Unless otherwise the Lord is done writing our story, then it shall be done. It is finished. It is perfected already, but we are not yet perfect. Our salvation is perfect time of salvation, but the process of salvation that is happening every day, that's the reason why I also would like to believe that if I do not do good in my soul's faith, my name can also be removed. Or rather, secondly, I can be saved, but I will be losing everything. You see, the book of Acts says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be given much power. Power! What kind of power? A moving kind of power to become witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're born again and you receive the Holy Spirit, you will be empowered. And that power is working mightily. Ephesians chapter 3.20 He is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that you could think or imagine according to the power that is set in motion, moving in our lives. So move according to the power. Move according to the setting up of power of the Lord upon your life, upon my life. Let us be united together. Let us love one together, love one another, and let us work as under shepherds of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our master shepherd. And let us utilize that power, and let us use that power, and let us use that ability, influence of the Holy Spirit, leading us and guiding us, and also giving us hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That power. According to the grace of God given to me, says Paul. Says Paul according to the grace of God given to us. Hallelujah. We are God's field. We are God's building. What does it mean? In every turn, in every place, in every position, in every hour, in every time, we are gods. We are in the authority, ownership of God. We are not the one who owns ourselves. Not even can be able to give salvation to ourselves. So, friend, I thank you. And I'm sorry I have touched the screen so many times. So my camera switched uh, in front, camera mode, and so I could no longer, I could no longer edit that. Bear with me. I am just standing uh, just uh, before the door of this comfort room to hide myself and to shoot this live and to forward this all over. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for you have called us together. Uh, to be one in the body of Christ and to be one in the congregation of the Lord saved by your grace, by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the finished work of the Lord on the cross of Calvary. And also, we thank you, Father God, for bringing us hope and bringing us empowerment to do what you want us to do. And when we start to do what you want us to do, you have promised in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, that you will always be with us. Thank you, God. And I thank you, Father, for your loving kindness and for your embrace. And so we pray and ask you to continue to propel our hearts and our minds to be filled with enthusiasm and passion, burning passion that will govern us through so that we can do a lot of influence and exploits in our lifetime and uh, to share the gospel to wherever you are bringing us. What lies in the future, Lord God, our Father, we thank you and ask you that it will be a beneficial one that could really benefit the ministry that you have entrusted unto us, the church that you have entrusted under our care. So bless our respective family, bless our respective uh, officials in the faith and pastors and senior pastors and bless our hearts, Lord, that we can really follow through what the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, leading their hearts uh, for us to follow them according to your will. 
those who are coming from the United States of America, those who are coming from Europe, those who are coming from Asia, those who are coming from the 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 east eastern uh, side of the world, those who are coming from Australia, those who are coming from uh, uh, the islands of the Philippines, those who are coming from the cities of the Philippines. Lord, I pray that Jesus be God and Savior over every continent, over every province, country, and city, and island, and family, and its person. Every day until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ comes, may your work continue to expand according to the power and the will of our God in heaven in the name of Jesus Many thanks to be unto you, and let the glory be yours, and let your name be lifted up, and let your name be shining through us in every day. This we ask you as we receive your benediction, Father, as we receive your, uh, uh, your communion in the Spirit, in Jesus' name. By the way, yeah, in Jesus' name. By the way, this is a very important part. If you still don't have a personal relationship with the Lord, and you're watching, whether it be evening there in your time zone, or noonday somewhere somehow, or early morning right here in the Philippines, and you don't have a personal agreement and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. In a simple prayer, we can pray for you, okay? If you can just bow yourself, your head before the Lord, wherever you are. Or if you are driving, you concentrate on the road and take this in your heart as your personal Savior, uh, for personal prayer for safety of your soul. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross of Calvary and shed His holy and precious blood for the remission of sins. For if there is no remission of sin, there is no blood, there is no forgiveness. So thank you, Lord, for giving us your Son, Jesus. He died so that we may also die in our sinfulness. He lived again so that we may also live in a brand new life. He went back to heaven so that we can also reach heaven according to your plan. Lord, I am a sinner, and I need a Savior. And I acknowledge the fact that no one can save me but you through Jesus Christ. So I open up my heart and invite the Lord Jesus to come and live into this life. Forgive me from all of my sins, Lord. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Take all my shame by the fire of the Holy Spirit and write my name in the book of life. And I thank you, Lord, for you have forgiven me. You have purified and sanctified me now. Thank you for making me a brand new person. Write my name in the book of life in heaven and allow me to serve you as my thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, congratulations. You are now born again and made a child of God. John 1.12, it says, For as many as those who have come to believe in the name of in the, the Lord Jesus Christ, He gave them the authority to become children of God. Oh, guys. Praise God. Your name is written in the, in the book of life. And congratulations. And open your life to receive uh, more graces and, and benefits and gifts. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Beth Punai, one of our supporters for our missions. And uh, my brother, uh, Val. Hi. Val do my heart. You're there. Okay, watching, bro. Thank you. So, I'm already perspiring inside this comfort room. But nonetheless, I am happy to see you. Regards to my family and my relatives, to my uncle, uh, Captain Ray Miramar. Captain Jess Miramar, our family, respectively. I'm perspiring. And I'm sneezing now, sorry. 
it's getting hot inside this bathroom now and it's 3.20 so it's been 30 minutes to be together with you live 32 minutes to be exact thank you so much and wait for another video and I will be sharing this video uh, no editing um, everything is in prompto no notes uh, just trying to listen the Holy Spirit you can do this too so that's our devotion for today have a happy Tuesday and excited for more thank you Lord thank you Jesus we love you thank you Holy Spirit thank you Father.